Hi there, thank you so much for joining me. We are in the wee hours of the morning between June 9th and 10th, and it is such a spiritually potent week. The Holy Spirit is what I'm talking about in the spirit realm. And I just felt that after this entire week of seeking, I was driving home and I felt I needed to share what's on Father's heart. And I looked up into the night sky and I saw my favorite moon. The apostrophe moon, I like to call it, but it's the waxing crescent at 11 to no 11% illumination. And it just warmed my heart so much because I always loved this particular phase of the moon because it, it felt to me like I am possessed in a good way. I belong to whoever made that beautiful sliver in the sky that I am loved. It felt like I am a cherished possession by something great. And so when I saw that, I was like, clearly, <laughs> to me, that was, there must be something on Father's heart. So that's what I'm here to share tonight or in the wee hours of the morning, because this is the week of Shavuot. And Shavuot is, is so tremendous. It is an appointed time um, in a spiritual calendar, not only for Hebrews but for those, or Jewish, but for those who are grafted into the vine, because Shavuot is a remembrance, a celebration of how Father God gave His people the Torah, the original faith, the commandments on how to live life His way in a place where He gave it on Shabbat. So rest, rest that I am your Father God, that I will be in covenant with you and make you a happy people for you are mine. And so Shavuot is so significant because it is also the Pentecost, but those grafted into the vine celebrated Pentecost uh, not too long ago. So in this season where it's Pentecost to Pentecost, where the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is also being like buttoned up and sort of put into this encapsulated celebration that we can remember and go, Father God, you have poured out your Holy Spirit once and with the original word that you gave your people that is truth, we can say, Father, remember us, do it again, give us a fuller measure of you, more truth, more of your direction and your leading. This Shavuot time is so precious. So this is also a sharing about the Maseroth, and because we are asked to remember these appointed times like Shavuot, it's called Moedim, because it speaks something, a cycle as we're going into elevation by the Spirit, the Holy One, to a place closer to Father's heart. What's happening in the sun, moon, and stars according to the Maseroth, not the Zodiac, but God's cosmic love story first given to us in the heavenlies, and then walked out on earth by the Messiah, written in the canon of scripture, and then put into our hearts if should we have accepted it. So this is what I'm speaking because the sun, moon, and stars right now are saying something beautiful, especially in the light of Shavuot. See that beautiful sliver moon right now? Is, is so, well, I should, I should say, the biblical basis for this is in Genesis 1, 14 to 18, when the sun, moon, and stars was made on the all three were, well, all the heavenlies were made on the fourth day as a time wrapping around the earth. So you can explain it or visualize it that way so that we can understand times and seasons, days and years. Well, that word season is Moedim, which is appointed times like Shavuot, where we say, Father, you did this once. Let's have it again, fuller measure so we can glorify you and be your people who invade earth with heaven. And in, uh, not Genesis, Psalms 19, 1 to 3, it says, All the heavens declare the glory of God. Day unto day they utter speech. Night unto night they reveal knowledge. Well, that word utter in Hebrew, it is naba. And naba means prophesy. So the sun, moon, and stars, all the heavenlies are foretelling, they're foretelling a, father's God, a Father God's heart to His people who have ears to hear, hear, eyes open to seek and to see, and a heart open to listen. So as we lean into these scriptures, because all of creation speaks and, and leaves us in a place where there's no excuse for all of general revelation in what's made His handiwork, uh, nature, you can call it, speaks of an intelligent designer that we are a part of. So now let me get into the nitty gritty. We're at five minutes. 
So the sun, moon, and stars, according to the Maseroth, which is God's cosmic clock, um, a love story to his people so that we can stay in time, in tune with him and his heart and know what time it is in all of eternity sense. Now the moon, which is representative of his people, the church, is moving from where it is before Shavuot, which is in Cancer, then on Shavuot, the 11th to the 13th, it moves into the constellation of Leo and is by Regulus, the bright star and, and um, the lion which is beautiful, and that moves into, on the 14th, into Virgo, which is, is quite interesting. Um, so the sun goes from Taurus, and then on the 15th, after the moon moves into Virgo, on the 15th, the sun takes a new direction and goes into Gemini, which is sort of like an interesting, fuller message of this Shavuot week. So let me try to explain. Uh, according to the Maseroth and the understanding of the fulfillment of the promise that the constellations highlight particular traits of the Messiah, the moon in Cancer, it, it's speaking about how there is something we need to be watchful for. Our discernment needs to be sharpened because there is an anti-Christ spirit rising, things that are going to distract that seem real but are actually dark and will distract and keep you from the original true. So watch for those things, that things that will take you away from the pure truth because then when you stay in that um, purity, then the church can move into the heart of the lion, the Messiah who will come back with a roar for God's people. Because when we are in Father God's heart, we are true to the heart of the Messiah who sacrificed everything for our lives in eternal sense, and our heart is ever pure and true before Him, then we are in sync and we will experience love and passion and the reality of who we are beautiful creation of a creator who loves so much. And then it moves on the 14th into Virgo, which was a reminding his church, remember, I have the promise in my right hand. I will show you my promise in power, but be fruitful. The, the wheat sheaf in the left hand of the constellation of Virgo, be fruitful for me. It's about um, not chastity as much, but really uh, fruitfulness and harvest time as you've gotten a fuller measure of the Holy Spirit being in the heart of the lion on Shavuot then be true and harvest 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 be more fruitful knowing that I am a promise keeping father now the Sun going from Taurus into on the 15th a new direction into Gemini is fantastic because Taurus is speaking of the Abrahamic covenant that the the true sacrifice the Messiah has already been done, so his blood covers us all. No more boat, uh, goats or bulls or whatever needed, that his promise to make Abraham's descendants more numerous than all the stars in the Milky Way has happened because when it moves into Gemini, it's talking about how his chosen people, the Jews, because they first rejected him and mostly still do, there was people that follow the Messiah grafted into the vine. They're like twins, the Gemini. So all people, all flesh, it, it says in, in scripture that the Holy Spirit will pour out onto all flesh, that the young ones will prophesy and the elders will dream dreams. See, all these things are creating a message across the heavens that we can live out here on earth. This is what we're observing on Shavuot. So this is what I believe this week is significant for, that we need to stay true. But the question is, as I'm looking at the time, it's almost time. I am going to say, as the sun, moon, and stars, according to Maseroth, is speaking God's original love story about the Messiah, his son, given to all for those who would accept it. It's also challenging us, well, it's in the canon of scripture. It's been in the original language in the stars that we can agree with. How is it upon our hearts? Are our, are our hearts clean and pure, open, surrendered, so that when the Holy Spirit floods us, it can flow clean, mighty, unhindered, and we can go forward into our callings and our missions with absolute power and might, which is what the Holy Spirit is. The Ruach HaKodesh is all the promises, the comforter, and everything we need to fulfill our mission, our prophetic purpose here on earth. So this is what we'll explore in part two. I'm Jane Justice Park. Thank you for listening to this Shavuot expression of love in the heavens. I'll see you on part two. Thank you.